So here we have 2017, May, June, paper 41, question number 5. Compounds J, K, L, and M are isomers of each other with the molecular formula C9, H11, N, O. All four isomers contain a benzene ring. Two of the isomers contain a chiral center. The results of six tests carried out on J, K, L, and M are shown in the table. The question says use the experimental results in the table to determine the groups in addition to the benzene ring present in each of the four isomers J, K, L, and M. In these isomers, right? In each of these isomers. The question says complete the table below identifying the groups present in each isomer. Okay, so we have to identify the groups and then complete this table to indicate which groups are present in each isomer. Okay, so we're going to look, look at this one test at a time. Okay, and we're going to figure out the groups present in each isomer based on the results of these tests. So the first test that was carried out is that each of these isomers, each of these isomers is reacted with cold HCl. So we just added cold HCl to a solution of J, K, L, and M. And J, K, and L, all of them dissolved in cold HCl. Cold meaning room temperature, dilute, aqueous HCl. Okay. And M did not dissolve. Now we've learned that amines are organic bases that react with cold dilute HCl at room temperature okay and they form salts and those salts end up dissolving so even if you have even if you have amines with a bunch of carbon atoms and they're insoluble in water those amines will dissolve in acid okay they'll dissolve in acid because they form salts in acid so again over here we have a nitrogen compound right we have we have organic compounds containing nitrogen and the nitrogen compounds that are basic right that form alkaline solutions they're basic and they react with acid and dissolve in acid are amines. Okay, so this indicates that J, K, and L, the J, K, and L have amine groups, okay? whereas M does not have an amine group. Now, the second test is 2,4-DNPH. An orange precipitate is observed with J, K, and L, but there's no reaction with M. Now, 2,4-DNPH is a test for aldehydes or ketones. Okay, if you have an aldehyde or a ketone present, you get a positive test. Right, so that indicates that J, K, and L have an aldehyde or a ketone, whereas M does not have an aldehyde or a ketone. The third test is alkaline aqueous iodine. Right, that's sodium hydroxide and iodine aqueous. This test works for a methyl ketone group, CH3CO, or it works for methyl alcohol, CH3CHOH. Now, since you already identified that J has a carbonyl group, we know that this is going to be a methyl ketone. Okay, this is a methyl ketone or a CH3CO group. All right, we already know it has a carbonyl, so now we specified what type of a carbonyl we have. We have a ketone, and specifically, we have a methyl ketone. Same thing applies for L. Right, it's a carbonyl, but specifically, it's a methyl ketone, so CH3CO. The fourth test that we have, if we warm with felling solution, we get a red precipitate with K and no reaction with the others. Now we know that K already has a carbonyl, an aldehyde or a ketone, and felling confirms that we have an aldehyde. Okay. So here we have an aldehyde group, CHO or aldehyde. So test number five, we're heating with aqueous sodium hydroxide, no reaction with J, K, and L. But M is broken down into smaller parts. So we have hydrolysis taking place. Specifically, we have alkaline hydrolysis. And now, you know, M is a nitrogen compound that's not an amine, but it does undergo hydrolysis. Therefore, it is an amide. Okay, because amides undergo hydrolysis and they're not basic, which is why amides didn't react with cold acid, but they will get hydrolyzed by hot acid or alkali. The last test that we have is diazotization. An addition of alkaline phenol. Over here, we see that only K undergoes diazotization. Now, diazotization is when a diazonium salt forms. And the only type of compound that forms a diazonium salt is phenyl amine, right? Diazonium salts are produced from phenyl amines. Where we have the amine directly bonded to the benzene ring, right? We have an NH2 bonded to the benzene ring. So, we know it's an amine, K, is an, K has an amine group, but specifically it's a phenyl amine group because it can form diazonium salts, okay, it undergoes diazotization.
So in compound J, in compound J we had an amine and we have a methyl ketone. So you can write methyl ketone or you can write CH3CO, doesn't matter. Okay, CH3CO. Right? Compound J, amine and methyl ketone, same thing for compound L, amine and methyl ketone, right? We have the same results. Compound K has a phenylamine, don't just say amine, because we specified specifically that we have a phenylamine, right? And we have an aldehyde. So in compound K, we have phenylamine and aldehyde. Okay, and then for compound L, we saw that we had the exact same positive test as we had for J. So we have an amine and the methyl ketone again. And you can write down CH3CO as well. Compound M has an amide, right? That's the only positive test it gave was that it underwent hydrolysis. So M has an amide. Okay. Name the type of reaction occurring in test 5 that converts M into P and Q. That was just alkaline hydrolysis. Okay, you can just say hydrolysis or you can say that it's alkaline. Hydrolysis, so we have alkaline hydrolysis, right? Okay, again, alkaline hydrolysis was this reaction that broke up M into P and Q. Then we heated it with sodium hydroxide aqueous. So you can just say hydrolysis or you can say alkaline hydrolysis. Suggest structures for compounds P and Q. Compounds P and Q form when M is hydrolyzed. M has the molecular formula C9H11NO. Now we're forming an amine and the salt of the carboxylic acid because we have alkaline hydrolysis. Now what amine has the molecular formula C6H7N? Now we know that compound M has a benzene ring. That information was given to us that all the isomers have a benzene ring. So one of these two products of the hydrolysis will have a benzene ring. And it can't be Q. So this only has three carbons. So that means that this guy is phenylamine, right? Because we have a benzene ring. That's six carbons. And then we're just left with an NH2. Right? So we have C6H5 NH2. So the molecular formula is C6H7N. And we're also making the salt of the acid. Here we have a three carbon salt of the acid. So that will be sodium propanoate, right? The acid would have been propanoic acid, but in this case, we're making the salt of the acid, so that is sodium propanoate. So CH3, CH2, CO, O minus, Na plus. Isomers J, K, L, and M all have the molecular formula C9, H11, N, O. Use the information in part A to suggest a structure for each of these isomers and draw these in the boxes. Draw circles around all chiral centers in K and L. Now they already told us that two of the isomers have a chiral center and now they specified that it's isomers K and L. Now starting with compound J, we already know that compound J has an amine and a methyl ketone group. We also know that, we also know that it's not a phenylamine group, it's some other amine, right, because it didn't undergo diazotization. So it's an amine but not a phenylamine and we have a methyl ketone. Additionally, we know that J doesn't have a chiral center because the chiral centers are in K and L. Compound J, we have a benzene ring. That's six carbons. We have a methyl ketone. So CO, CH3. And we have an amine, but not phenylamine. So the nitrogen in the amine cannot be directly bonded to the benzene ring. So that means that here we have eight carbons. In total, we have nine. So we have an additional carbon and that carbon must be bonded to the benzene ring which is then bonded to the amine, right? Because this NH2 cannot be directly bonded to the benzene ring, it has to be bonded to some other carbon that must be bonded to the ring. So now we have a total of 9 carbons. We have C9, H11, NO. Now compound L gave us the same positive results as compound J. So compound L has the exact same groups. The difference between the two, however, the difference between the two is that compound L has a chiral center. Compound L has a chiral center. 
So in compound L, again we have a benzene ring. We have an amine and a methyl ketone. However, in this case, the methyl ketone who is directly bonded to the ring, then this would be the only option that we have. As we had with compound G, we wouldn't have a chiral center. Okay, if we had a CH2, NH2, and a CO, CH3 on the way. We need to have a chiral center. So that means all three carbon atoms are going to be part of the same substituent on the benzene ring. So we're only going to have one substituent on the benzene ring, and have a carbon that is then bonded to the methyl ketone. We have a methyl ketone group, and then we also have a hydrogen and then NH3. So now we have a chiral center. This carbon is bonded to four different atoms or groups of atoms. So it's a chiral center. And we still have an amine and we have a methyl ketone. So we fulfilled the requirements, right, that would give us those positive tests. One thing to note is that it doesn't matter what positions you put them, put these substituents in relative to each other. So if you wrote this in position, if you wrote them next to each other or you wrote them opposite each other or you wrote them one carbon away from each other, it doesn't matter. Okay, as long as you got the correct groups. So this over here was our chiral center in compound L. Okay. Now we're going to figure out the structure of compound K. Okay, now for compound K, they've told us, compound K, they've told us that we have a phenyl amine group and an aldehyde. We have a phenyl amine group and an aldehyde, okay? But we also know that compound K has a chiral center. So in compound K, we have a phenyl amine, right? Because it undergoes diazotization, it forms a diazonium salt. We have a benzene ring. We have a benzene ring with an NH2. Right, that's how we're going to get a diazonium salt because under those diazotization, so we have this phenylamine group. We also have an aldehyde, we also have an aldehyde, and we also have a chiral center. Okay, those are, the, those are the three conditions that have to be met. Now, if the aldehyde was directly bonded to the benzene ring, if the aldehyde was directly bonded to the benzene, is it possible for us to have a chiral center? We have seven carbons already, so we just have two carbons left, the nitrogen's already been covered. So would we have a chiral center if the aldehyde was directly bonded to the benzene ring? We can have an ethyl group or two methyl groups. But would we have a chiral center? In any case, we won't have a chiral center, right? If the aldehyde was directly bonded to the ring, then that means we're left with two carbons. So we can have either an ethyl group or we can have two methyl groups. Doesn't matter which position you put them in, we won't have a chiral center. Again, chiral centers can't be on the benzene, so we need to have carbon that's bonded to four different atoms or groups of atoms. So the aldehyde definitely isn't bonded directly to the ring. The same thing applies if the aldehyde is part of a two carbon chain like this. We had a CH2, CHO and then we're left with one carbon. So we have a CH3. Again, we cannot have a chiral center. Okay, if the aldehyde is part of a two carbon substituent and we also had one last carbon left, that would be a methyl group. Again, this doesn't have a chiral center. So this is not possible either. So this is not possible either. So that means that the aldehyde isn't directly bonded to the ring. We can't have a chiral center that way. And we also don't have the aldehyde on a two carbon substituent. That means all three of the remaining carbon atoms, right? We have nine here. And we have six in the ring. All three of the remaining carbon atoms have to be part of the same substituent. Okay, so for example, if I had something like this, if I had something like, let's say, a carbon atom, if I had a carbon atom that was bonded to, let's say, a CHO group, Okay, so now I have the aldehyde. Let's say I had a hydrogen and the CH3. Right now I have nine. I have nine carbon atoms. Right now this carbon atom is bonded to four different atoms or groups of atoms. So this is a chiral center. Okay, so this is the only. So so this is the only possibility that we have for the structure of compound K, okay, where we have an aldehyde, we have a phenylamine, and we have a chiral. Center. Okay, all three of the remaining carbon atoms that are not part of the ring have to be part of the same substituent. Okay, they were part of different substituents. We cannot have chiral centers. Again, the position doesn't matter if I draw it in any position. Okay, I just shown it on the carbon next to the final amine, but the position doesn't matter as long as we fulfill the requirements given in the question. Okay, so this satisfies all the different tests, right? It undergoes, it reacts with fellings, it reacts with 2,4 DNPH. We have an aldehyde, it has a chiral center. And it also undergoes diazotization to form a diazonium salt because we have a phenylamine. Okay, again, the relative positions, 
doesn't matter which position we draw it. Okay. Now for the structure of compound M, now for compound M, we know that compound M resulted in the formation of P and Q. When compound M was hydrolyzed, we formed an amine and a salt of the carboxylic acid. So we know that compound M has an amide linkage. And for the amide, we know that this carbon atom was bonded to this nitrogen. Okay, in compound M, this carbon atom was bonded to this nitrogen, right? And when that amide was hydrolyzed, when that amide was hydrolyzed in alkaline conditions, we made the amine, the amine, and the salt of the carboxylic acid. So what we have for compound M is we have a benzene ring. We have a benzene ring, so we have a nitrogen. That nitrogen is bonded to is bonded to a hydrogen. Okay, after hydrolysis, it gained an additional hydrogen. So it was bonded to a hydrogen and it was bonded to that C double bond O. So this was bonded to a hydrogen and the C double bond O. And that C double bond O was bonded to a CH2 CH3. Okay. That C double bond O was bonded to a CH2 CH3. So when this amide was hydrolyzed, when M was hydrolyzed, this this CN bond broke. This CN bond broke, resulting in the formation of sodium propanoate and phenylamine. Okay. It was this bond that was hydrolyzed. This, one, right? this is the bond that was broken to form compounds P and Q. Compound N is an other isomer which has the same molecular formula C9H11NO and also contains a benzene. N contains the same functional group as M. In other words, N also has an amide linkage. Okay, N also has an amide linkage. When heated with sodium hydroxide aqueous, again we're talking about alkaline hydrolysis, N produces ethyl amine and a sodium salt W. So just the structure of W. Now again, compound N, okay, compound N has an amide linkage. Okay. So when it's hydrolyzed in alkaline conditions, it will produce an amine and a salt of a carboxylic acid, right? It will produce a salt of the acid because we have alkaline conditions. So that's your sodium salt, it's a salt of the acid, and we produce ethylamine. So what we're saying is that when N is hydrolyzed, when N is hydrolyzed, we produce ethylamine, CH3, CH2, NH2, that's ethylamine or ethanamine, and we also produce some salt of a carboxylic acid, right? Some sodium salt, CO2 minus Na plus. Now, we know that compound N has a benzene ring, which means that the sodium salt also has a benzene ring. Sodium salt also has a benzene ring. Right? Because it's not in the amine. So that means that this guy here must be a benzene. Right? This guy over here must be a benzene. So we have C6H5 CO2 minus Na plus. Right, so the salt that we have, the salt that we have over here is actually sodium benzoate. Okay, this compound N has an amide linkage. Okay, it has an amide linkage. Right, so we have a C double bond O and then an N. Right, this nitrogen here, this this is the bond that broke. This is the bond that broke, and we ended up making ethylamine. So then this nitrogen part was just a two carbon. There's a two carbon ethyl group on the nitrogen, right? So when this bond broke, we made ethylamine and we also have a benzene ring. Now, here we have three carbon atoms, which means that we only have six carbon atoms left. We have six carbon atoms left, that means that we just have the benzene ring left, right? So this was compound N. This was compound N. And when it's hydrolyzed in alkaline conditions, we'll make ethylamine or ethanamine, right? That'll be this two carbon amine. And we'll make the salt of the acid. In this case, it will be the salt of benzoic acid. That is sodium benzoate. Sodium benzoate. So C6H5CO4 minus Na plus. So W, W is just sodium benzoate. So W is just sodium benzoate. CO4 minus 